Happy Friday! Friday means Tensor and any news dropped us a new video called How Strong is Rimuru's Warlord, Chion? Warlord? I didn't realize her epithet was Warlord. I thought it was just like best secretary. Let's get it. Xion's immense power can be boiled down into two main okay. categories. There's her battle well arts, which enhance her physical strength and combat capabilities, then her unique skill cook, which lets her do literally anything. Most broken power. Like, genuinely so broken because it's at this like conceptual level where you can like rearrange and like change things in an atomic level because it's just like ingredients in this abstract concept called like chef thing no seriously you can't just make someone into a living meat cube without first getting powers bordering on the divine powers potentially capable of harming rimuru there's obviously more to her than just those but if you're curious to hear more and want to know how all her skills work Keep watching as I'll be going through everything that makes Xion Tempest's Warlord. Before he goes into the ad segment, and I know he will, it is kind of crazy how I thought that, for whatever reason, uh, fucking Soei was stronger than Xion. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. No, he's not. It's like, I think last episode I mentioned it, I'm like, hold the fuck up. Soei is really strong, I know. But I don't think he's Xion level. Not even close. Xion's doing insane things. Like, what does Soei have? He's got, like... Other than like the espionage and spying and skills regarded for like utility, right? His powers are basically just like string, you know, fucking John Smith string attacks. Shion is literally reality bending. I think that Shion better than Benny Mara? Maybe that's a bit too much. But Shion versus Benny, like, I, I genuinely don't know who would win. I'm honestly leaning towards Shion because her powers are again just fucking stupid strong. Tempest's Warlord. But before we get started, but first, do you <laughs> like ships? Do you like. Uh, Kantai Collection? What is this? Is this a new gacha? What is this shit? This is not. Oh, it's a zero lane. A zero lane still going strong? Me, honestly, I think that a zero lane designs are peak, but like something about like ships, tanks, girls with guns. Like, I don't, I don't hate Arc Knights, but I much prefer like. More like Epic 7 design in terms of like gacha waifus. Doesn't mean I hate it, right? It's really in six year anniversary. It's actually pretty impressive. Gacha game. Oh, I can see why it's going 60 years level. <laughs> India Farka. Jeez. Okay, these designs are insane. What the fuck is this? It's like a scuba diving onesie that got slightly covered up. Like, oh my god. Oh, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> We're not even on a ship anymore. Wait, we're, we're, we're not even on a boat. <laughs> Anyways, let's do late. Go get it, boys and girls. But anyway, if we're going to understand how strong Xion has become, then mm. we first need to understand the stages of her evolution. We first see her as a B-rank ogre of the forest, which on its own is definitely nothing to scoff at. They were considered the highest class of monster in the forest. In Jira Tempest. The ogres are still the highest tier of monsters. Because, like, there's, like, a bunch of other races, right? Like, beyond, like, I think, uh, like, a body of water. That one episode hinted at, like, oh, the bees exist there, you know, where we get the Apitos honey and shit. But, like, Tengu, worse than these. So you're telling me the bear and the, the minotaur and the horse people? Lower rank than the ogres. The ogres are the strongest in the forest. Obviously before Rimuru, but until his arrival, they were supposedly the elite. Okay. Fast forward to when they were named, and the resulting evolution was more than just turning from an ogre into a Kishin. Their lifespans were now extended from 100 to over 1000, and oh, their Jesus. lineage brought closer to their spiritual ancestry. It makes more sense how, like, Hakuro's been a baby daddy for, like, how many fucking years? It's two things that actually go hand in hand, since the more an ogre evolves, the closer they get to their original bloodline. Which is? A line you'd be surprised to know originally stems from fairies. What? How the hell does a fairy... Is like at the top... How the fuck? How? How does a fairy and a... What does an ogre and a fairy even have in common? How the... So you tell me eventually... Fairies were fucking other things, and other things were fucking other things, and eventually an ogre was made? Like, what? So, goblins have the least fairy blood and live the shortest, ogres a bit more and live for a century, then ogre- The more fairy blood you have, the longer the lifespan is. 
everyone in this forest has a bit of fairy in them? Just a bit more and live for a century, then ogre mages re-energize the power from their spiritual ancestors and in turn gain skills which border on the divine. Okay. How powerful then is Zanoni? Well, let's just say they're on the level of regional gods, both due to their near infinite lifespan and godlike magic. They're now on Ram and Rem's level. <laughs> because they're Onis, right? Oni. Oni. Who would win? Ram with her horn versus Shion. How does the power scaling work with Tensor versus V0? Peak Ram, right? When Ram still had the horn? Like prime Ram versus Shion. I mean, <laughs> you think that like it's Shion's powers again? <laughs> the gift that she has is like, she's reality bending. I, I think that Shion clears most of the V Zero verse, right? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I, like, it's 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 not that V Zero is worse than Tensura. No, it's just that the power scaling and the things that they do in Tensura is on another fucking level. <laughs> Reinhardt would slam everyone in that series. Are you sure? I don't know if Reinhardt would win in this series, bro. I, I feel like there's a lot of bullshit powers in Tensura. Lifespan and godlike magic. So, while she started out as a B rank monster capable of wiping out a village, her evolution into village a Kishin places her now above the A rank. Okay, so we're no longer village tier. We're, this is like a bordering on like small town level, right? A level capable of destroying entire towns. Oh, I got it! I called it! Go village, then town. What's after town? City? City district? City blocks? Suburbs? And then country. Once again, that's nowhere district, close to province. the level she's at now, but it does show she was already very strong to begin with. Okay. Now, the basis behind all of Xion's raw physical power comes from the unique art battle will. It's a technical skill that transforms magic kills within the body into fighting spirit. The fuck is that? Sounds like a bullshit resource that makes you fight stronger. It's like magic cures into fighting spirit. If aura is what emanates when someone's not doing anything, then fighting spirit would be what the body releases during combat. Hmm. Almost like a martial arts kind of aura. Hmm. It enhances the power of Xion's physical form. This is most notably used to expand her arsenal, since with only a sword to attack up close, battle will arts add quite a bit of range to her. There's her Ogre Sword Cannon, which unleashes pure Hi. energy straight from the tip of her blade, then Ogre Sword Guillotine, which straight up extends it. Shion has always been so fucking cool. Like, even in, like, the early game Season 1 against the Geldark, bro, this single attack, this, like, Buster Sword, I already knew she was fucking goaded at that point. This is her sword with aura, then fires it off like a projectile, while the other applies the aura like a coat and has it stay there. Okay. It extends the size of the sword to three times what it normally is, then is usually dropped from above in one swift, gravity-enhanced slashing motion. So, whereas Ogre Sword Cannon shoots aura as pure, shapeless energy, Ogre Sword Guillotine keeps extension. it in a fixed shape. Right, like a projectile almost versus just like an extension of the blade here. It's two fundamentally different applications, both with the use of battle will arts. As for how devastating these attacks were, well, each flash of cannon had shockwaves strong enough to cut orcs in half, while those physically hit literally exploded. Okay, I, I need a tier list though. I, 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 are we on small town level here? Right? Like what can what how how strong is this? I need the actual power scaling jargon. Well, those physically hit literally exploded. Everything within 20 feet was wiped out instantly. Part of this was due to Xion's pure overwhelming strength, but the extended range wouldn't have been possible without Battle Will. Okay. Guillotine was used in combination with Ranga, and the result was an attack faster than the speed of sound. So both were simple yet I mean Quite slow for a speed of sound here. It's an attack faster than the speed of sound. I know, I know. So both were simple yet devastating attacks, and both fit Xion to a T. Now, there is another battle will called Air Flight, and that just enables her to fly with magical aura. Ah. Oh. There's also Mana Bullet, which we've seen in her fight with Sophia, but that's not a very practical art to use in battle. As an art that materializes aura, molds it, then releases it, the time it takes Just to do all that beams, would basically. only be useful against someone not suspecting it. 
Sure, the impact's strong enough to disintegrate the target's body, but that's only if the target's still present when the attacks finish charging. If anything, it's only good for showing her pure destructive energy. Another battle art is Diamond Path. Gobzo so lucky here. Like, Gobzo loves this treatment. Gobzo loves Xion. And this solidifies Xion's body until it's as hard as metal. Basically, armament hockey, right? This is like coating your body with some sort of like, I don't know. Or uh, some barrier makes it strong and durable. It's hard as metal. She coats her body with a layer of aura, then hardens it like some sort of protective force field. Okay. It thickens her skin to the point of preventing cuts and burns, and even allows for the absorption of lightning. So while it is one of the more advanced battle- Just lightning? Sounds like lightning's kind of a shitty element if like this is the one thing that we have resistance against here. So, while it is one of the more advanced battle arts a Kijin can use, it's extremely useful once perfected. Now, battle will techniques can do all sorts of things, but it's actually these two extra skills which add that additional oomph. Steal strength and strengthen body. It just sounds like, you know, stronger and then more shield, you know, like more durable and more stronger. To her attacks. Steel strength enhances her physical strength, while strength and body boosts the capabilities of her muscles. So, while steel strength makes her strong enough to disarm an orc general with a single swing, using it in combination with strength and body makes for some pretty heavy hitting attacks. Keep in mind this is all before her evolution too, so I imagine where we are now her physical strength is way beyond that. Yeah, this is like what? Pre-season 2 True Demon Lord Ascension Shion. And then after? Like she, she one recently is just like, I, I just, she's been popping off. Even in like, now I might get a lot of hate for this, but I low-key, I don't know. I low-key might have enjoyed the Shion fight during the whole Hinata versus Rimuru episode than Hinata versus Rimuru itself. That's a crazy thing to say, but hear me out. No one expected Shion to do that, and the display of strength that she showed was an absolute power fantasy. It was great. Rimuru versus Hinata was kind of short and kind of anticlimactic, but Shion just delivered that power fantasy to me, so I was like, damn, Shion, let's fucking go. Since we're not quite there yet, though, it was as of right before their fight with Charybdis that Shion was justifiably number two amongst the Kijin. Benimaru was the only one stronger, but okay. when it came to frontal combat... Like, like, before she had that Master Chef skill, yeah, I agree Benny won here, right? But, like... After, even with Benny's gift as like, you know, the fucking strategist, like the, like a war, war general shit. I just, she only is just doing different things at an atomic level. I just don't see how like Benny's stronger. Only one stronger, but when it came to frontal combat, neither Soei nor Shuna could handle her. This was also when her role as secretary was firmly established, but deep down she was truly a bodyguard. She's not a secretary at all, bro. She fucking sucks as secretary. She can't even follow the plot. She exists there to show her fucking cleavage in this business suit because Rimuru wanted a fat titty secretary. Straight up. Like, she has no logistic skills, and that's totally fine. Well, more like a berserker holding the bodyguard position. That being the case, whenever she was in a fight, nothing else mattered. It's a trait best exemplified during Tempest's initial creation because every now and then you'd have the occasional magic-born come and cause trouble. Ugh, Shion would have no problem enacting the law of sur- <laughs> Oh, I think- Was that Millen that did this shit? I can't remember. Yeah, you know, no, this was- this was the Millen mark, right? And the Millen just like one-punched this- It's surprised that he lived. Surprised that he took Millen's hit here, got like thrown across the fucking city, and lived. Nah, she probably went easy, but fucking Phobio, man. Survival of the fittest, since for the most part, every monster tended to abide by it. A convincing show of strength was usually all it took to force them into obedience. If after those errant magic born still wanted to cause trouble, then Xion would have expressed permission to execute them. And then, it's like, if Xion is that strong and people respect her, what people then think is, well shit. You're telling me this slime is the boss of this girl? Then they get even more intimidated, right? So that's why these two are like... I, it was kind of weird how they didn't... They couldn't sense like Rimuru's Mawahaki. I guess it was not a huge amount. But as soon as, you know, Dagro brothers show up, it was like, Oh my god, this power! And that's still interesting. 
And I think Doc Roll was mentioned, meant, I forget which Anius video it was. Maybe it wasn't an Anius video, but I think that he has like a shitload of magic tools, right? Like something about his resources is super high and clearly doesn't associate that with, with Doc Roll's like um, sons. And then Shion beating them up and then them showing respect to Rimuru. To cause trouble, then Shion would have expressed permission to execute them. That was typically her day-to-day -day back before her evolution. Post-Charybdis, she had received fairly extensive training with Milum, then post evolution Really? I didn't know they had training. What the fuck? They trained? Okay. With Milum, then post-evolution is where we start to get to the good stuff. Yeah, post-evolution is like, again, just god level. Like, you are encroaching. Like, you're, you're, you're fundamentally changing life itself. Like, her powers is bullshit. So... Master Chef, aka Cook, is a unique skill birthed from Xion's intense desire to be better in the kitchen. That's crazy! Her desire to be better in the kitchen has basically made her into a god. When her moment of evolution arrived during the Harvest Festival, she had apparently wished so deeply to become good at cooking that she was able to manifest that desire straight into reality. The standard description is that it lets anything she makes taste exactly how she pictured in her mind, but the actual power behind it is so much more. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm genuinely surprised it's not already an ultimate skill. Yeah, I like this should be ultimate. Like, what's beyond Master Chef, bro? Fucking, I don't, I don't know. Like, Master Chef is already a show. What's beyond Master Chef? I don't think Iron Chef is quite, quite, quite right. Iron Chef used to be an old thing, and the Master Chef showed up. The level in which such a power manipulates the very laws of nature is so broken that it even surprised Diablo. Mm -hmm. So if this was enough to impress an ancient connoisseur of magic, then it's definitely got to be pretty powerful. What is it then that makes it so powerful? Well, that would be its two subskills, certain outcome and optimal action. Okay. Mainly the effects of certain outcomes, since that's the core component allowing her to manipulate reality. So, the reason Xion's food now tastes so good is because certain outcome enables her to change an object's nature to the way that she wants. Even if it looks bad, it tastes good because the certain outcome is like, you can just change the outcome of that scenario? It directly alters the laws of the world and essentially gives her the power to do anything. Again, Whether it be change the result of an action or change the state of an object or So like, could you change the outcome of someone dying? Could you? Human. No matter how impossible, Xion could do it. So long as she could imagine it, she could make it possible. Like, like it's, 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 certain outcome makes it, it's just, the limit is her imagination. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. So, like, let's say someone was dying. Could she, let, let, let's say Hinata, right? Hinata got fucking pierced, donutted, right? Remember the end outcome of fucking... Rimuru versus Hinata, Hinata's like dying, and we're like, oh no, what are we gonna do? Could she won't have just used certain outcome to just reverse that? To make her live? Kinda like Stars and Stripes' quirk, minus all the silly restrictions. The part that wants to make this skill even more OP is the fact that anything it changes then remains forever. Whatever unnatural forever. state or outcome she's left the object she's manipulating. This is the torture scene, right? They'll stay like that indefinitely since that's what's considered their new natural. <laughs> Baldi? Bal I, I feel so bad for Baldi that he still died. Maybe he's still around. Who knows? Maybe Diablo's got his soul and we can put him back in. But like, I think, is this Rosin? This is, this is Ramen here? Is, is this Ramen getting tortured? I mean, I see Rosin in the uh, speech bubble here, so I'm going to assume that this is Ramen after Shion interrogating him. They like that indefinitely since that's what's considered their new natural state. Unless a more powerful law manipulation skill was there to counter it, whatever Shion changes would be permanent. So it's pretty crazy to know that she can permanently alter the very laws of the world, mm -hmm. but not so crazy when she really only uses it for cooking. There have been two instances where we've seen this in action, and both were well beyond what I thought Xion was capable of. So, the first was during her interrogation of these three, then the other was in her battle with the paladins. I've already talked about the first one before, but the gist is that she used certain outcome to turn three Ooh. people into living, breathing meat cubes. Ooh. By slowly peeling back their layers of skin and muscle, Ooh. Xion carefully disassembled them Stop! piece by piece, then reassembled them randomly over and over. She would do so right until they were on the brink of death, then restore them to full health as this monstrosity. A certain outcome had Nightmare. made it so it was as if they were born this way. 
it didn't matter that their body no longer functioned the way it should since like this is this is beyond war crimes <laughs> now did the family trio deserve it yeah i think so they're fucking trash we didn't start this shit they came to our territory they started all that shit right but like god damn we are we are just breaking the Geneva Convention like Mr. Beast right now. Xion had effectively willed it to be otherwise. Now, fighting the Paladins was a lot more of a basic application since certain outcomes simply modified the effects of their holy field barrier. Okay. You see, rather than be this magical force field that purified magicules, Xion simply overrode it into something more smashable. She had got the results she wanted just by thinking about them. So the barrier... She just like said, fuck this barrier. I'm gonna change this barrier into something I can break slash done. Moving on to optimal action, this is pretty much an IRL easy mode. Not only does it allow Xion to determine the best course of action in any situation, but it also allows her to recreate anything she's done once before already. Hmm? If we look back at her fight with Clayman, it's optimal action which allowed her to navigate his flurry of attacks so effortlessly. I see. Okay, so like, what is what is this one called? Sorry, sorry. What is this one called? Well, easy mode. mode. This is pretty much by thinking about them. Moving on to optimal action. So certain outcome is the imagination. She can just basically reality bend. And then optimal action is again just... <laughs> you are on easy mode. Autopilot. Everything. It's like her own Raphael pretty much. Is it not? Like, she sees different attacks coming in different directions. I mean, Rimuru kind of has something similar, right? Where Raphael basically figures all the calculations of different things out. I mean, Rimuru even has, like, pretty much future sight now. Where he can, like, see these moves in advance. But Shion, very powerful. Certain outcome made them easily breakable, while optimal action provided the best route to break all of them. Such were the effects of both working together. Combine this with her intrinsic skill, Ogre Berserker, and what you get is a freakish level of force capable of Poor overwhelming Clay, man. a demon lord. I feel bad for Clayman now. I think that if I rewatch season 2 and remember the horrific things that he's done, I would not feel bad, but... Man, I feel like we're just bullying Clayman over and over and over. Now again, he's just a fucking unit of measurement and determining power. <laughs> Goddamn. And that Slime Diaries episode where Clayman had the pink apron and he was cooked like baking scones, just, I feel bad because of those things. Level of force capable of overwhelming a demon lord. It was essentially a better version of her extra skills, an innate ability that enhances her physical capabilities way beyond what these two did before. This brings us now to what I think is Xion's most valuable asset since it's mere- <laughs> the, the, the greatest assets are on display right now presence effectively makes her only reason gobza joined here was because of this bro for immortal it's an intrinsic skill you might okay right 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 so are yo my giddy right these guys are all immortal right now to what i think is shion's most valuable asset since its mere presence effectively makes her immortal it's so it's not just her troops but she is also immortal right because like we've seen these dudes get cut up and yes the injuries suck for a bit but they don't die it just does it heal up I forget exactly how it works, but they do not die. It's an intrinsic skill you might recognize as complete memory. A powerful passive born from her resurrection during the Harvest Festival. This makes it so her memories are stored in her astral body, rather Okay, right, right, remember the other components when we were first learning about the differences of like what magic and different shit is in this show, right? Soul, material body, physical flesh, spiritual body, memory, recording device that overlaps the material body, astral body, so many different layers, the container for the soul. Other than her brain, which is where they were previously stored. So that may not sound oh, like Jesus. it's anything important, but the relocation of her memories very much is. It essentially makes it so that even if her body and brain are destroyed, she can fully recover no matter what. I'm starting to notice a pattern of behavior here where the astral body is often used to offset important things to that locations in case that you get wiped, you die or something, and then we have like a backup of that shit. I swear, this is not the first time we use the astral body to kind of temporary store shit there. It's what happens when you combine a conscious soul with an active set of memories. The physical body can regenerate even after being vaporized. Of course, you do need something like ultra speed regeneration in order to do it, it does but heal. losing her body doesn't cause death anymore. So, perfect memory essentially turns Xion into a special sort of race known as a spiritual life form. 
it's a perfect memory just think about like again just the fucking temporary backdrop of all your fucking data right you just have a usb stick that's your astral body you fucking offload that shit your main computer dies fine fucking find a different vessel stick that shit in you're back it's a fancy word just meaning she can think with her soul this is actually why claimant's mind control proved ineffective since a spiritual life form is straight up immune to them her ability to think with her soul makes any attempt on her spirit useless. All this makes Battles of Attrition quite her specialty since even if Xion can't defeat an opponent one-on-one, -on -one, at the very least she can fight them as long as is needed. Her Cancel Pain makes her feel nothing when damaged cancel and her pain. Ultra Speed Regeneration keeps her in the best shape imaginable. It was actually the key to gaining the upper hand in her fight with Clayman. Whereas he was becoming extremely tired, not a hint of fatigue could be seen on Xion. Oh, I thought it was just because she had crazy stamina, but Ultra Regeneration, Cancel Pain, OP. There wasn't even a scratch on her that you could call damage. So, to Rimuru, this was Xion looking like a demon lord herself. Now, I the mean, the Clayman was a demon lord by name, not a true one, but still a demon lord by name, and Xion just fucking destroyed him so easily. Xion could have easily sat at this table if you're gonna let someone like fucking like, a clay man show. Like, I, I don't... You think that Sky Queen could beat Xion? I don't think so. I honestly don't know if... What's that guy's name? The fucking... Uh, the beast guy, Karion. Like... Back then... I'm not sure if Karion could beat Xion. Actually... Post-gift MasterChef Xion versus Karion. Why couldn't she win? I don't know what Karyon has. He just kind of gets dusted here and there. But I still don't know his attacks. Like, I've seen him fight, right? It's just physical attacks here and there. But, like, I, I don't think, like, he has something on the level of fucking reality bending. I think Shion would win, exactly. Like a demon lord herself. Now, another prime example. Like the old, sorry, the old generation of demon lords, I don't think Xion could touch people, right? Like Luminous, Geek Crimson, or Ramorous, and them mill them in their primes. Fuck no, fuck no. Not even like Dagrul, uh, fucking Dino, Luminous, I don't think so. But the generation after, which is Clayman, Karyon, Frey, again, the weakest fucking generation. <laughs> I can't. Why do they gotta be so trash? What? I like Karyon. I like Sky Queen. Clayman's kind of funny, but they, they low-key trash. Like, fuck. Benny couldn't, so I don't think she could. Listen, I... This might be a crazy take from me, but I think that Shion, with the gift, the Master Chef is stronger than Benny with his gift. I just don't see how Benny having this understanding of war and strategy and being a true-born leader and I, I know how powerful he is but Shion is literally reality bending I don't know man example of this extreme durability in action is once again during her fight with the paladins the anime didn't really show this but when facing their joint attack infernal flame the damage done was actually quite substantial was it I mean it was an attack stated to possess more heat than nuclear cannon so Remember that Karyon could hold his own against Milam at least for some time? No. I don't think Milam was trying. I think she was holding back. There's no way Milam went into battle mode? Nah, I don't believe that. No way. Nah, I... I am I being disrespectful towards Karyon? Is this my headcanon that I thought that Milam held back? Because, like, I genuinely don't see how Milam in combat form... <laughs> Versus Karyon could have, like, unless she was like, like, there's no way she was trying. There's no way she was fucking trying, dude. Shion's skin did in fact burn off upon impact, but ultra speed regeneration just restored it without anyone noticing. All of which was done within the confines of a holy field. An impressive feat considering how long she was able to stay within it. As for how she was able to expertly cut the flame, well, to my surprise, she'd Reality actually bends? gone and utilized multiple skills in tandem. First was multi-layer barrier to protect herself. Okay. Next was all-seeing eye and magic sense to probe her opponent's weaknesses. Then after that was optimal action to read the flow of the heat waves. The result was a... Yeah, it's just optimal outcome and fucking cert... It's just optimal outcome and cert... Optimal action and certain outcome, right? Optimal outcome. Oh, I see the fire coming. I can cut it here. And then certain outcome would be like, boom, I can cut fire, fuck you. The result was a single fluid motion that cleaved right through the Unique attack, skill. allowing her to avoid taking it on directly. 
it made it so the only damage she took was her skin burning off. I love how they figured out a way to do Xion fan service while she's attacking. <laughs> I don't think this is the first time I've seen this shit either. Usually they'll show you a front view of her titties and they'll swing down really heavily. And as the sword comes down, the camera angle then changes right behind to show her ass. Off. In any case, there are other examples showcasing the nonsensical nature of Xion's master chef skill, but I think you understand now what it's capable of. Yeah, it's okay. She had a particularly fun time using it against the paladins and clergy. It was at this point that she was now in Oni 2, which, as I said, is yet another evolutionary step closer to her original spiritual ancestry. She was less a monster now and more just a straight-up god. She is. Albeit a lower-level one, but god nonetheless is dictated by the amount of spiritual essence she possesses. Now, for those wondering what she meant by saying she was a Wicked Oni, this was just a variant- Wait, this- uh, wait, wait, Wicked Oni is, uh, Slime Diaries, right? Slime Diaries, the episode where there was like a dark Shion show and it wasn't that the wicked or is that something completely different? Because there was that one Slime Diaries episode where we were like thinking about different possibilities of Shion's like evolution tree and there was like a, a dark Shion there I remember but was that the wicked Oni? Leaning more towards Damon rather than Elemental. Likely a result of one or two different factors during the Harvest Festival. So that's the majority of what makes Shion so powerful. Renard believes her to be something of a disaster class threat, but I personally Probably higher. think she goes even beyond that. What is it, catastrophe? I mean, Calamity? himself mentioned here that she's pretty much the same level as Betty Maru now. There is one last thing I still need to talk about though, and that's Xion's sword, Goriki Maru. Okay. It's a special greatsword imbued with the effect Soul Eater, a modification allowing it to attack the spiritual body. Unfortunately, OP. it doesn't literally eat souls, but what it can do is deal damage to spirit-based life forms. That's so rare. It basically does the same thing as Hinata's sword, That's so rare. minus the whole seven-hit restriction thing. So, depending on the amount of force she- It's better! But- But the seven-hit restrict- Hold up, hold up, hold up. How did this sword work again? This wasn't like you get hit seven times and it's instant death, was it? It's seven hits and then you do spiritual damage? Was it the instant death? Okay, 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 okay. She owns, like, uh, doesn't need to, she doesn't have the instant death, but still does spiritual damage. No, this is dead end rainbow. This shit's still more OP. Friction thing. So, depending on the amount of force Shion applies, she could very easily kill someone instantly unless successfully resisted. So, like, she could just have the entire seven hit string in one strike if she wanted. So it's more OP than Dead End Rainbow? Unless successfully resisted. I don't know. That's not to say it would kill 100% of the time, but when it came to an aggressive fighter like Xion, one hit could very well be more than enough. Okay. Such was the potential outcome when attacking with both spiritual and physical damage. Then, for those wondering how she could possibly unsheath it, she doesn't need to since the scabbard just disappears with magic. But yeah, that's pretty much how strong Xion is. I am even more convinced now that with this soul eater capability where you're attack doing damage to the souls, which is so rare, that Xion is like beyond Benny. Maybe I'm delusional. I probably am. But based on the things that I've seen and what Xion can do, it is on a different fucking realm compared to the other Kijins, in my opinion. Shuna has some extremely cool holy shit going on, which is some things that other people can't do. But I feel like, in terms of like a 1v1, Shion would not lose against the other Kijins, even Benny Maru. If Benny can win, I just don't see how he can overcome the reality-bending aspect of this shit. It's just beyond stupid what Shion can do. I enjoy the Master Chef ability. It, it, it's just... Shion has been honestly one of the best like uh, sources for power fantasy. The more I think about it, all the Shion moments has been just so much fun. She may not be the smartest, but she does have a very keen sense for battle. Like, whenever she senses victory, she'll always pounce at the chance to secure it. That's not to say she isn't learning either though, since while before she'd only attack headfirst with brute strength and force, she's now learned how to apply herself better. She's made strides in using technique to beat those inherently more powerful. So, all in all, she's quite the impressive fighter. I can't say whether she's stronger than Benny Maru or not. I'll say it for you, Anonymous. I'll fucking say it. Not, but to say she's as strong as a demon lord might be an understatement. If she truly learned how to hone the effect of her certain outcome subskill, then that by itself could even be a threat to Rimuru. 
It's a feat that at this point in the story shouldn't be overlooked. OP man. Now, I just want to thank Azure Lane once again. Yeah, for use the discount code and in use Azure Lane. Get your free pulls. But this is a great video just highlighting how OP Shion is. I think a lot of people that's just watching the anime casually don't comprehend how stupid her Master Chef power is and what it's capable of doing. Like the Falmus trio, how we tortured them and dismembered them and put them back apart like fucking Legos and they just exist. This ability to just using your imaginations as your power, right? Then there's the other stuff of like, you know, fortifying your strength, you know, ultra regeneration. Yes, these are pretty strong things too, but it just kind of pales in comparisons to, I guess, the certain outcome ability as well as optimal action. It's just on another fucking level. And then you're still doing spiritual damage too. Because remember, just because someone dies, it doesn't mean they're really done until their soul is pretty much like decimated, like Clayman here, right? So just <laughs> Shion, bro, I think definitely makes it on the list of like one of the most OP people in Tensura. Probably on the lower end because obviously there's a lot of actual demon lords and shit, like crazy shit we don't even know, right? Do I think Shion is as strong as Diablo? Fuck no. No, Diablo is doing some crazier shit, but amongst her peers, like Benny, like fucking Soe, Geld, like other people, I might think that she is our strongest soldier if we exclude Diablo. And I think that she's better than Benny in a 1v1. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just feel like the reality bending aspect is just too much. But hey, here's a video from Annie News. Please go give him a sub, like a video if you did, and I'll see you on the next one.